Okay, my name is Whitney Watts, and it's February 27th, 2020, and I'm interviewing Abe Eskenazi, Eskenazi for the Viva Shalom One Story at a Time project. Good morning. Good morning. Um, tell us about where you're from and how and why you came to live in Dallas. I was born in Havana, Cuba. Well, I was born in Cuba, and uh, in 1961, my fa uh, family left Cuba, they went to Jamaica for a couple months, and then we came to Miami. Uh, there was, you know, very little uh, uh, employment opportunity at that time in, in Miami because of all the, you know, the uh, influx of uh, Cuban refugees uh, in Miami, and uh, my family had the opportunity to, well, they were given the opportunity by the uh, the highest of either going to New York or Dallas, and uh, they selected Dallas, so we're, we've been in Dallas ever since. Okay, wow, so um, once you guys made the decision to leave Cuba, how were you feeling about that relocation? I was four years old, so I didn't, you know. Not a lot of choice. Yeah, I didn't have any, I don't have any recollection of it really. Okay, um, so obviously you said you were four and your memory was not as good, but um, what is your like greatest memory about being in Cuba, about your time in Cuba? Um, just from what you know, my parents have told you know told us that uh, it was a very nice life. It was uh, you know a lot of opportunity, and when the uh, uh, Castro regime came in, they would. You know, you was made life impossible. They uh, took your property. They, uh, you know, would confiscate your automobile if they wanted it. Uh, uh, they would one one party would tell you that you had to open your business. Another party would come and they would tell you that you had to close your business. You know, it just became impossible to uh, live a normal life there. So most people that could, you know. Uh, left Cuba at that time. But yeah. before, beforehand, it was a very nice, uh, it was a nice life there from what I understand. I heard it's beautiful. It's, it's still beautiful. Yeah. It? Um, talk about your feelings and first impressions of U.S. and Dallas. Obviously, you said you were four, but whatever you... My first impressions of the, US, of the United States? Mm -hmm. um, I didn't speak the language, you know, I spoke only Spanish when I first came over. Uh, I learned, you know, my, my dad uh, uh, has always been in the uh, retail business and, uh, you know, we had to work quite a bit. My mother also worked, we were, uh, uh, you know, we had a babysitter, I guess, for a while. First grade, I, by that time, you know, two years being in the United States, I'd learned English. And, um, uh, you know, I could get by fine in school. They would use me as an interpreter from time to time. Oh, yeah, that's helpful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this was Dallas that you have your first impressions of, like, specifically? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because you said you were in Florida and then... Yeah, but we were there for a short period, just like a few months. Um, in what ways was your family involved in the Jewish community in Cuba? You there was a, uh, uh, what they called a deportivo, you know, or I believe it was what they called it. It was a, it was a, it was a Jewish uh, country club, more or less, on the beach in uh, Havana, and they were very active in that. Uh, they were, uh, you know, they belonged to the synagogue. And uh, they, you know, observed all the Jewish holidays, and we weren't Orthodox, but uh, they were observant. Okay. Well, that's, that's, I didn't know anything about the Jewish Cuban community, so this is very interesting to me. There's actually a, a pretty extensive Cuban Jewish. Oh, and really? It's, yeah, it's still there. There's still several synagogues, and they're active, and... I know uh, Rabbi Gershon went and visited the synagogue once in Cuba, or one of the synagogues in Cuba, uh, and uh, it's it's still it's still active, not extremely active, and you know they're uh, 
short of, uh, of uh, resources, but it's still there. That's very interesting. Um, describe your introduction to the Dallas Jew Jewish community and how you're involved now. Uh, I was, I went to uh, uh, a high school where there were, I think, maybe half a dozen Jews in that school. So most of the most of the involvement of the Jewish community was in B'nai B'rith, you know, BBYO. Uh, and I was very involved, you know, I was very active back then. We had uh, uh, dances at the hotels and uh, extensive competitive sports, you know, foot, flag football, basketball. Uh, and to this day, you know, we, we maintain a, a relationship with some of the different people that were, you know, that we were friends with in BBYO, guys and girls. Okay. Um, this is actually really interesting. Describe, um, or how welcoming did you feel when you, um, how welcoming did you find the community as a new immigrant? Again, you're a child, but anything you can recall is helpful. Um, I, I don't recall. Oh, you don't? <laughs> no. So you, okay, well what about when you got older? You very know? welcoming, very welcoming. You know, uh, I was, you know, very involved in BBYO and uh, it was very nice. I mean, being Jewish on top of being Cuban, my grandmother was married to, her second husband was Cuban, and he talks about his immigration experience. So oh, really? Everyone's got kind of a different story. Um, what differences, if any, do you recall between Jewish customs in Cuba and Jewish customs in Dallas? Well, we're Sephardic, um, and there are Ashkenazi Jews as well. There's like half and half, you know, and as far as uh, even in Miami now, you know, they have the, uh, the different synagogues. and. But you know, we were more the the, uh, the foods were a little bit different. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know, being Sephardic, it's just a little bit a slightly different uh, style. In you know, in services and food, you know, the the pulpits in the middle, like you know, in a Sephardic synagogue, the pulpits in the middle, and the, the congregation surrounds the pulpit. Uh, the Ashkenazi, they're up on, you know, so, yeah, different prayers a little bit, you know, different tunes. Sephardic is supposed to be very, you know, more uh, uh, of a Middle Eastern uh, influence, you know, very, a lot of nice melodies and things like that. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, what Cuban cultural traditions have you maintained? Um, speak Spanish fluently, uh, you know, love Cuban food, yeah. um, you know, and just a connection with the Latin community in general, you know. Oh yeah, the, the Jewish Latin American history is very interesting. Yeah. I've always found that to be interesting. Um, what are some that you no longer follow? That I no longer mm -hmm. follow? Like traditions yes. or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, nothing that I can really think of, you know, pretty much maintained about the same. Yeah. Um, Growing up, there was actually a Cuban, a Cuban community, Jewish and non-Jewish, and they would have, you know, regular functions at the hotels. The Fairmont Hotel had a, uh, uh, a lot of Cubans in the management and the catering, and uh, we could get special, you know, pricing on. And we had very, very nice parties. There was a, uh, a good Cuban band oh, called yeah. Tropicana that was, you know, here in Dallas, and you know, very nice function, New Year's Eve, you know, things like that. Very nice. Yeah, celebrations. Yeah. Always good. Yeah. Um, Great bar mitzvahs. Oh, um, yeah. Is, yeah. Um, since coming to um, Dallas, how has your family grown? Uh, I have a daughter. She's a doctor. Uh, she's living in Houston right now. Uh, my sister has uh, two children. 
Uh, one is there. One is in Houston. The other one is in Kansas. Uh, my uh, my mother, you know, is active in uh, several different. You know, she stays very much on top of finances, and she's very active. Um, and we have in relatives in general in Dallas. We, we have like uh, I think about. 80 different, real, 80, you know, cousins and second cousins, and we've got about 80. Uh, I have a small ranch with cattle and horses that I really enjoy. And um, just the, you know, working the land, and it's, it's a favorite pastime of mine. I uh, worked in several different businesses. But right now, um, my father passed away five years ago, and I'm running the family business, which is a, a men's retail store. Okay. Yeah. David's store. Okay. I want to talk to you about that. I, um, do you, did your whole family come over from Cuba, or do you still have family in Cuba? We have that? some relatives. Cousins of my, my parents that are still there. Okay. Um, that's really interesting. Your family's in retail. I'm doing my dissertation on Jewish retailers in the South and shaping racial identity. Oh, really? Mm hmm So I don't know if you want to tell any more about your family history. Sure, or sure. If you want to talk about um, Cuban, uh, Cuban Jews, anything you want to add is helpful to the, to the history. Sure. Uh, well, my father, you know, my father, when he came to Dallas, he uh, uh, was looking for, for work in retail because they had a store in, in Havana. That's what they were, they were in dry goods. My grandfather would sell door to door, and but my dad, you know, would run the store itself. Um, and then my uncles also had stores. So uh, when they came to Dallas, he eventually wound up working at Levine's, which is a dry goods store mm -hmm. that, you know, was originally bought over by the Zale Corporation. And there's still a few Levine's left. Uh, my dad, Ventured away from he was a uh, he ventured away and opened up opened up his uh, his own store and he in fact asked me what I thought that you know he should name the store and since I always had to work since I was like you know six years old I always had to go to the store and work with my dad you know whether it was Levine's or whatever uh, and I, everybody would always come into the store and he was very personable and people would always ask for Mr. Dave you know, for David, and you know, they always came and asked for David. So when he opened the store, he asked me what the name is. Well, name it David's store. That way people know where you're at now, you know, since you're no longer in Levine's. So that's the name of the store, David's store. And um, they also sold door to door. Uh, it was under Los Moritos, which is the Moors, you know, yeah. Los Moritos Corporation, which is still active today. They sold door to door, primarily in West Dallas, uh, West Dallas, and around the Love Field area. And it was my my uh, my grandfather, uh, my father's uncle, who did that until he was in his 90s. He was selling door to door. Uh, uh, my father's uh, uh, brother-in-law, he would sell door to door, then eventually he just, you know, he stopped doing that and he came to the store. Uh, anyway, uh, they, they supplemented the, the uh, uh, credit business, you know, out on, on the streets, you know, with the store itself. And that store is, you know, it's about 60 years old, almost 60 years old. It was, um, in a shopping center that was owned by the city of Dallas. It was run by the Dallas Housing Authority. And just behind, where the, where in the same general area where the store was, were a lot of uh, government housing projects. So it was a booming business at one point. Uh, you know, you had a captive audience of people that didn't have cars and they needed clothing and, you know, whatever, electronics. Uh, and so it was a, it was a, you know, very prosperous time in that shopping center. The store's still there, you know, we're, we're hanging in there. 
and uh, we're trying to accommodate the new, you know, s the new ways of selling, like with Amazon and you know eBay. So we're we're moving along. Yeah, I mean, I think these family department stores really transformed retail and shopping and the American economy on so many levels. So, and when you go in and you do the research and you find out like all of these innovative features that people adopted, you're like, wow, you see how that's threaded through to like current shopping experiences. So that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about your what yeah, you brought in? Yeah, sure. Yeah, this is. Um, this is a photograph of my, well, my dad's in there. He's a, he's, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, that's him right there. And that's his grandparents and my, that's my great-grandfather. And uh, it basically talks about, you know, like the title says, Cuban Jews start all over in Dallas. You know, when they left Cuba, they basically uh, came here with nothing, you know. We, um, my, my parents and my, my uncle and aunt were the first ones to leave Cuba, and my uh, grandmother actually took my sister's belt and she sewed uh, uh, cash inside her belt so that when we came to the United States, ultimately we would have some money, you know. And it was a, you know, they were very stressed about. The fact that she had, you know, money in her in her belt, and uh, at one point she had to go to the bathroom, and one of the uh, communist guards, you know, said, "Oh, I'll take her," you know. So my mother was, you know, very alarmed about, you know, the that they could discover the cash, and uh, my uh, my, you know, when you left, you had to list everything that you were leaving behind. And apparently when my uncle was going to leave, I heard something about the fact that he, he had gifted a toaster to a, uh, a girlfriend of his or something like that. And when they discovered that he had given away the toaster without the government's permission, they, uh, uh, it, you know, they caused a big ruckus over that. Uh, uh, I forgot all the details, but uh, they showed up at the house with, you know, these are like past neighbors and friends, you know, who are not part of the communist regime. They showed up at the house with, you know, machine guns, which they probably didn't even know how to use, you know, over a toaster or something of that sort. I don't, I have to, you know, check my resources again or my, you know, but that's kind of what I understand. My grandfather uh, bought a brand new Buick, very nice, beautiful car, and uh, he took that car. From Havana, he went to go visit my parents in, in Artemisa. And when the neighbor saw this beautiful car, he decided that that car was an anti-revolutionary car and that they were going to take the car. So they took the car. <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. Right. Yeah. Um, have you been back, or has anyone in your family no, been back to no, Cuba? No, I haven't been back. I'm thinking about possibly going back. Um, my brother actually went two years ago to Cuba. Yeah. And he said it's, it's naturally it's beautiful as as beautiful as you could ever imagine. But probably being there so early on, there are a lot of like kinks in their travel. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. So okay. Well, if there's anything else you'd like to add. Um. No. Okay. Well, thank you.